welcome back. Or not welcome oh. back. Welcome to the inaugural Hollow Net Marauders book club, which uh, maybe I put together like in a fever yeah, dream last like, night. Maybe like not. Made that today. <laughs> the backstory <laughs> behind that. <laughs> the backstory behind that, I texted Levi at like, I don't even know, midnight, 1 a.m. And I was like, oh, I want to do this thing, like a YouTube series of, we talk about the books um comics and you know also the new high republic releases and any new books because i feel like we don't shed enough light on them and there's it's such you know the higher public's massive now and we'll get into that but uh you know it's matt and levi are here for a reason um you know they're both obsessed with the higher public as am i but i feel like you guys really really like it might be one of your favorite things in star wars when it's all said and done um or as we get even further into this would you say that's uh pretty uh on brand i firstly want to preface with the fact that the infamous trombone has started uh, my roommate i believe just started playing trombone so i will be muting myself frequently i noticed that i was like what's he doing <laughs> so <laughs> you might have some audio there it is there, there it is. is oh Ooh, that's great enjoy the enjoy the dulcet tones of the trombone. Is, i like you, it you take yeah. this one matt you take this one first that's a that's a sound that's uh that's the song that avar chris is always hearing with the force <laughs> it's so. beautiful <laughs> so High Republic, I would probably say, what was the question again? Well, <laughs> I was gonna, I said you and Levi and myself maybe, but I'm absolutely more of like an on-screen person, but you guys are so strong with like the books and the High Republic and like Matt, your excitement for the High Republic really got me excited for it when it, when it was starting, you know, when it got postponed and then when it eventually started and you know, we were just talking about a rising storm, which just came out. We won't talk about that really here because um, we just started with it. We don't want to spoil anything, but I'm reading, I'm listening to it slash reading it because we do the audio books and I'm like, oh my God, this is like, is this like the best, is this going to be the best yeah. era of Star Wars? Like the best <laughs> era of Star Wars. I, don't I, know. I know it's, it's, it's so good though. And the Jedi it is so, are good. so good. I it's mean, so uh, good. the the Jedi are supposed to be at their peak, right? And, and yeah. for, in a lot of respects, they are. I mean, I don't, I don't really, I love the idea of the Jedi at their peak, and I can't really think of a time, at least in canon, um, but maybe in Legends too, when the Jedi really existed without the Sith. Um, and I know that they, the Sith do exist in this time period, so the Jedi could never really be at their full peak, but this is the best that they ever got. And I really like that depiction. Yeah, in Legends, this area in the timeline is pretty uncovered. Yeah. Or rather, the reverse, it's pretty covered. Or No, just kidding. I said the it, right word. You said it's it right. uncovered. You, right. you said it right. I was thinking Indiana Legends Jones, and I was like, uncovered. I was like, no, that'd be found. And then I got <laughs> in my head. I got in my head. But yeah, like, um, and I love how everything crosses into each other. Like, well, that's... Know, I, was, I was catching up on, um, we'll talk about this issue, the new issue today, or whenever you're listening. The new issue this week is uh, issue six of... I call it the the Keith Trennis uh, run here, or the skier run, as you want to, whatever you want to call it. Um, I was catching up, and I forgot last week they show like how the Drangir really got, like how they awoken. They awoken yeah. into into the dark, right? And they kind yeah, of show yes. the background the of the Sith. Did the, was it the Sith that like kind of? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I guess we can go into spoiler territory here. I don't. I don't. I mean, the book's been out are, for a couple of months, yeah. So, but. If anybody hasn't read them yet and you don't want to, any spoilers, we'll Spoiler. get to, into spoilers for Into the Dark. And I'm going to mention something very quickly about The Rising Storm that's not really a spoiler, but I just want to mention it because it's a cool little tidbit. But yeah, Into the Dark is when the Drengir are released. The Sith put them there um, with these like uh, statues that are suppo supposedly like hold in the dark side on. and like, kept them at bay. On the planet thing station that we the see Maxine Snoke on. Station. Maxine Station. Yeah. We see Snoke which, chilling there in Rise of Kylo Ren. But which, yeah, if you've read, it. also if you've read Bloodlines or Bloodlines, the Maxine Warriors, yeah, the Maxine Warriors Ooh. who come out of the unknown region and cause a crisis during that time period. It's all all interconnected, and then you have oh, Snoke connected. at the Maxine Maxine Station. But yeah, so the Sith put them down there, um, and in I love. In the Rising Storm, the like one of the first things they mention in like the very intro of the book is that crawl. Avar, yeah, crawl. Yeah. yeah, well, Avar Chris is off in the Outer Rim fighting the Drengir, uh, because they're spreading all across the you know the Outer Rim. They're spreading to all these different remote uh, planets, and we saw that you know we saw that in the previous arc 
of the comics. Um, but now it's becoming like a full blown crisis. And I absolutely love that. And I love that. Uh, and they've, are, they've already tied the crisis into like, and its effects into Canon, which is yeah. really cool. And I, I don't know if you're there yet. I don't know if it's too much of a spoiler, but they're in the unknown regions. It's a threat to the huts as we see in the comic. And they mentioned that Nal Hutta used to be like a metropolis and it got turned into a swamp because of the Dren gear. I think that's really cool. Ooh, that is really cool. Spoiler. But yeah, um, that's great. That's just a, it's, it's just so like cool. Background detail, so it's so cool know. listening to write or listening or reading, as I always say, uh, Rising Storm. And then like we're it's classic Star Wars. We're getting filled in with the comics because as Matt just said, uh, Rising Storm is a year after Light of the Jedi, right? Yeah, and these comics and other stories are like the pieces in between. So it's it's so cool because you have those two, um, like uh, big chapters of the High Republic, and then everything else is kind of like um, little filler pieces. I don't know what you'd call it, little episodes in between. And um, know, it's all been essential so far. It really has been. Yeah, that, I, I, mean, I don't want to call it filler, but like I'm really surprised that how essential they made into the dark. Like Into the Dark is essential right. reading if you actually want to understand what the hell's going on with the Dren gear and all that. Yeah, it's the whole, so, it's the origin, well, not the origin story of the Dren gear, but the origin story of how they, they've come back. Of the, yeah. of the current spread of the Dren gear, yeah. Which don't I, sleep on the young readers either. Uh, no. Crash Point Tower and um, Attest right. of Kirk, both very good. Yeah, I, yeah. I haven't read Race to Crash Point Tower yet, but that's... And we got that, it early, Matt. We got it early. I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And we also got... um. Uh, what's out of the shadows yeah after i'm done reading these i will i would i can't wait yeah have at it yeah so in also in rising storm i don't want to spoil it but you know a while ago levi and i talked about uh what's the deal with the huts in the roar of the bounty hunters they talk about uh lena so and her relationship with the huts but it's it's an old like it's an old hut not knowing what they're talking about i forget their name and here we see Avar Chris forming that relationship with the Huts. Like, oh look, we have to team up together to take out the Drangir. They're too dangerous, and um, obviously they they see that. But I think that's so cool. Um, you know, we didn't have to wait long to see that answer. And just even the comics that are coming out the past few weeks are connecting, and they're not even in the same era. And then I don't know all the connectivities. I get very. I almost said an inappropriate word. I get very excited uh, when Star Wars connects with uh, with each other. <laughs> sure, sure, pal. That's an interesting sure, word. Buddy. I don't know. Interesting. And speaking of which, they just announced a character, uh, Deva Lompop, who is going to be right, the right, Hunter. the bounty hunter, right? Like a punk yeah. In the High Republic. Yeah. yeah, she plays like a big role in the High Republic. I'm super interested in that. And of course, they mentioned that Dirge is also a big player in the High Republic, apparently. And he uh, is- see that that was a. Was that, that a mis- mistake? That was a theory that, well, Dirge uh, is old, so he could be around during the High Republic. That's, I, but, but the bounty like hunter that is explicitly referred to as having ties to the High Republic is Deva. We just didn't uh, know it was Deva. Oh, okay. All right. Interesting. Because, Matt, I you had the theory. A Dirge could be a Drengear, though. Yes. You That's both what had I, that, that was theory. my theory. Yes. Yeah. You both had that theory. That's what it was. I'd love that. I'd love that. That'd be super cool. Because in the old <laughs> Clone War animation he was just like a bunch of tentacles together right like yeah. a hunter from halo yeah. yeah 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 exactly so he could be kind of just a bunch of vines together but in this new comic he was way more chill than i thought he was he was like, i read the <laughs> he was funny yeah he was uh, he's like i don't know he i always pictured dirge as this like formidable silent killer who just kind of like looms over you and just does his thing so but now it's he's like, only really that way in the micro series the majority of dirge content which is in the star wars republic run from the early 2000s he is like this really okay yeah, yeah. i mean he's still okay. eventually like you build to the point where he's using his tentacle arms and whatnot and anakin and obi-wan have to shoot him into a sun but <laughs> in the beginning He's still like, you know, it's him and Ventress, and they're the bad kids on the block, you know, and they have their their funny. I mean, he's brutal. He murders people brutally, but he has that like witty snap. In the Clone Wars series, though, the micro series, he doesn't say a single word. Yeah. Um, Right. But he he talks in in the the comics. He'll he'll spar you on his his speeder. They'll do the, (laughs) they'll, they'll do the land jousting, right? Jousting. Yeah. yeah, That's it. So, Uh, speeder jousting. That needs to come back. I don't know why. Why that hasn't been picked up again? That would be great. Maybe in the how are we public. feeling? Yeah, how are we feeling about the the Keeves Trennis run here? I thought it was great. 
I just read it right yeah, before jumping just, on. It. Hot off the press. Yeah. No, I actually really I really enjoyed it. First of all, I love Estella Maru. I yes. like I like him a lot. Yeah. Um one thing that I got really jazzed about, I know this is like <laughs> a weird thing to be jazzed about, but the droid, the astromech droid, like hanging out with the Stella Maru. I love seeing the different tech of the era and I'm we haven't really now, gotten yeah. like a good look at the droids. Yeah, there he is. And that's like a high republic astromech. I love that. And I like I like the look of it. It looks looks a little lower tech than than what we see in the Skywalker saga. Yeah. So I was I was pretty happy. The art, particularly on this run, is absolutely stunning. There's yeah. like in the third issue, I want to say, or fourth, actually probably the fourth issue, when there's like a chestburster scene with a hut. It's Ooh, like yes. yeah. one of the greatest splash pages are the, like the hut corpse on the second the second issue. Like it's all just it's wonderful. That was horrifying, but awesome at the same time. I, I reread that today to get ready for this. And oh man, I'm loving this run. Um, I always kind of like, I'm jumping around at who's my favorite High Republic Jedi. Cause I'm like, oh, it's, uh, it's Bell Zedifar. Oh no, it's Keeve. Like, I love Keeve and she's so relatable. And I just love a lot of her dialogue. And like, especially knowing where she's going. Yes. Like, yeah. And I think this is going to play a big, big part in, in that where she ends up, especially because we're teased the nightmare conjunction and Crawl. with oh, Darth Crawl, who is go. also part of the lost 20. So we've got a connection. We've yeah, got to have a future Matt. member of the lost 20 and a past member of the lost lost 20. What did and you say, AJ? I said, obviously Matt, don't you obviously <laughs> me. I was I so thinking about Keeve is the concept art or not concept art, but like part of the art for in one of the teaser trailers for the higher public. Or like that later down the line where she's all in white and she has a white lightsaber and she's like looks like Gandalf and I'm like, yo. Ooh, so we got a soak of the white and we could get Keith Trennis the white too. The yes, white. I gotta I gotta find this image. Keith like the white, so great. great. Knowing that she is gonna be. Someone had a theory the other day that one of the last twenty is really cool. Now that would make sense though. That but, Keith would be an acolyte, and I'm like, no, because no, that's she'd be, she'd be she'd way be too dead. old. She's probably That's 200, probably, probably 200 years. Or I mean, roughly. think about this. We I know. Well, we I don't know when. To, I want to keep it to books and comics. We know it's 50 years. True. Before. I want to keep it to more books and comics. But Dooku will be like 30 in that show. And if he's like looking at a bust of Keith Trennis. That'd be yeah. Sick. That would be That cool. would be sick. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to try to look for this Keith Trennis image that I'm referencing. I want to see a bust of Darth Crawl. So, Okay. <laughs> Well, yeah, I like Darth Darth Crawl. Yeah, they they one. have to have him. I mean, they have Darth a bus Bowser. for everybody, and he looks he looks uh, well. He doesn't look like he Darth was, Bowser. Yeah, he does. Can we like talk him. about my man here? Uh, yes, that guy, this, this Worm Doctor. I forget his name. Doctor Slugman. What is he? He's name. great. He's he looks oddly familiar. But. He does. He looks. He's from the Clone Wars. Thing. Yeah, he's the same species as uh, the Snake Guy. Yeah, the guy with Ooh. Savage. Yeah. The guy with Maul. Yeah, or yeah. Maul and Savage chokes out and throws. That's right. Fire. Yeah. Good call. Um, what was I gonna say? What was I gonna say? What's okay? So, <laughs> sorry, I'm going. I'm going back to um, going back to the Rising Storm for a second. Who's the Who's the uh, Beast Hunter? What's Ty Yorick. Ty Yorick. Sorry, Ty. guys. I would be Jeez. more talkative, but I'm, I, I don't want to. Trombone guys uh, chiming in. <laughs> sorry. Ty, uh, I was so confused when they introduced Ty in that, not to talk about Rising Storm. And as always, we're jumping around everywhere here, but that's what we do here at All New Marauders. Um, but yeah, Ty and Keev for some reason are very. I love. I'm loving Ty York so far, but I'm do. wondering. Did she, I don't know how far you guys have got, or if you know this already? But did she leave the Jedi Order? I do not know the answer to that yes i'm, I'm like yes. deep. She but she's did. not okay. part of the lost 20 no because <laughs> yeah i don't think she was a master i think you have to oh, be a master. you have to be a master okay that makes sense wasn't official yeah that okay. makes sense that makes sense too like ahsoka uh, isn't part of the lost 20 you know oh yeah that's true yeah i didn't even think of that either matt i was saying to jamie the other day and uh i don't know if i mentioned this on this recording yet but jamie would be here and she'd be giving great input but she's reading finishing into the dark so she can't Good. be part of the book club if she hasn't caught up on the book club. But what was I saying? I like how we can, and this we can, this is a space to do this now, but I like how we each kind of read the book um, and we come in and we kind of, we comprehend it different ways and we can kind of help each other out of like, oh, what happened here? Like kind of how you just did it. Because my like, 
I mean, not to say I can't comprehend a book, but sometimes <laughs> <laughs> reading comprehension, guys, it's it's tricky, right? But um, like what Matt was saying about Ty York, I was kind of confused of what the deal was there too. Um, but Levi picked up the detail there and we kind of help each other out. So that's that's why we have a book club. Speaking um, of... I'm glad we're here. Like comics and books, she's going to have her own book comic called a graphic novel <laughs> called uh, <laughs> oh, I forget what, it's, what is it called again um i believe it is called a graphic novel uh, monst it's i want to say it's monster she's basically a witcher uh, is what she yeah, is she's she she hunts beasts but it, she's um, gonna have her own graphic novel it's called like monster monster of something point monster, or something monster, peak uh, yeah, yeah monster of temple peak monster of temple peak monster there you go. hunters star wars edition there you go there we go i'd love i'd watch it i would too or I read it, I should say. But yeah, I'm pumped for her to get her own thing as well. And I know that we have that other like uh, mystery. I keep I keep coming back to like that noir mystery comic miniseries that they announced as well. So really excited, excited about that, that. dude. So me excited. too, right? Like another High Republic thing. Plus, we're gonna get those High Republic stories in that uh, Myths and Fables esque story. Or right. Myths and yep, Fables, Stellan Geos. Yeah. Yeah, I love Stellan Geos. I don't know much about him. And uh, so far, I, so far, I've heard of or heard of him. He sounds like Obi Wan the way Mark Thompson reads him. <laughs> I think that's that was just me tripping. I really do. Yeah, no, I, I don't, don't think... hear it as much. He's like a he's like a grander Obi Wan, if that makes sense. A grander Obi Wan. Well, yeah, because he's got the he's got the uh, cross Very guard smooth. saber. So yeah, that, that's um, that's automatically grander, grander, grander. How do we feel about when the Drangir chant meet? Meet, 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 meet. Okay, I'm gonna give up my search. I found one image, but it's Keeve with a mohawk, and she looks like she's from. She looks like she's Jack from Mass Effect. So there's a whole another. Th so many layers to Keeve that we're gonna see. I'm very excited. I'm very excited. Yeah, as she's uh, one of my favorite characters so far in in, uh, in this whole mess called the High Republic. This beautiful yeah, mess. Wait, wait, what you said about her being relatable? 100. percent I think she is one yeah. of the most relatable characters in the in the initiative. She keeps right. swearing. Yeah. I think that's and just funny. like, and I think it's the first issue of the the run. Yeah, she keeps swearing, and she meets um I Avar love... Chris, and she's like, "Oh my god, it's yeah!" Avar. And she swears in front of Avar and scares like Jesus, like relax. But I love how she handles the little fairy guy. I forget his name. That was funny when she's trying to climb the the peak, and and he keeps like buzzing oh, around, and he's like, "That was Ooh, great." You don't have any wings. That. You're gonna fall. <laughs> and then, and then the other fairy comes in, and he's like. <laughs> Oh, she doesn't have any wings. He's like, that's what I said. She's gonna fall. It's like that's funny. I loved it. I love that scene. I'm always a sucker for the master apprentice relationships. Like, yeah, and she's got a good one on screen. We don't get to see that many of them, but they're all heartbreaking in the end, obviously. And there's gonna be so many heart. There's already heartbreaking ones with, uh, you know, yeah. Spoiler: Light of the Jedi, Loden and and Bell. Loden um, and Bell, and, and maybe there's more to, to that. On, uh, oh my God, I forgot her name. Nib, no. Nib the second Buryaga. Great. Sure. No. Master, 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 Master there. Um, <laughs> no, she's a Tagruda. Oh uh, well, Jora Mali. But... Jora Mali. There you go. Yeah. What's but, What's his may, name? May she rest in peace. Yeah, dude. Oh, that killed me because I really as, liked her. As soon as she became like badass, she was she was gone in a second. I <sighs> see. What I did was, I read the comic issue first, and in that comic they say, "Oh, Master Mali's dead." And I, I did read, too. And I was oh, like, Matt did that also? Yeah. I was like, you guys are the same person. I was so disappointed. I was so sad. So was that. Yeah. But anyways, I was getting to uh, Keeve and Skier. They have such a cool relationship. And awesome. I love Skier. Like in a couple issues I, back, I felt him today when he ripped out his own arm, I was like, "Yeah, yes, Skier." Dude, yes, that whole great. vision, like that, was wild. And like how it worked. You know, she goes into his mind, or no? How did that work? Skier like goes through her. Well, he's got Drengear in him, and so his she arm. attaches to the Drengear hive mind, and they're in there, and the Force in the Drengear. And they hug. Like, they hug, and he has yeah. two arms. It's really cool. Yeah, that was that a lot was. Of people, a lot of people get stabbed through vector windshields in the higher public. Yeah, they get. Yeah, they should get probably fix that. Those things. Yeah, those things are like very death trap. cheap and basic. So <laughs> they should probably fix. Those. I sent you the photo of Keeve that I could find on Twitter, by the way. Okay, let me check that out. Do you want to share the screen for the viewers? Uh, but yeah, I think the higher public has been an absolute joy uh, to read so far. And yes, I, I I said this before, but nothing feels extra. Every single piece you read in something, 
and I read yeah. you know, it's just a courage and I read the comic I'm like oh you know it's it's Vernestra Road Emery and that's yeah. continuing their story I'm like that's great isn't that great look at oh, that. Look, at, look at her what happened there you know like what's going on there so let's explain this again that's concept art for it's just in one of the trailers like when they're flashing through the art like that's clearly Keeve okay that's from the trailer okay one of the trailers okay but she's you yeah, know that's it, sick and if the saber's white yeah you're right it's like I can't tell if they're pale green or white but either way she's got a whole different outfit yeah well that and then there's cool. a cover of her joining or not joining but she's like putting on a nile outfit i'm like what's happening here i'm like what see i think that's a trick i think she's going undercover or something oh, I so, so i don't think I'm just, she's gonna become a nile yeah. i'm just saying i love the, like being teased especially with the crawl stuff and the next the next issue has her clashing with a red blade i'm like what yeah is that? Like, yeah i know it's so exciting it's so exciting I'm pumped. However, I mean, I must say, though, as much as I'm loving the higher public, I do think that when War of the Bounty Hunters is all said and done, all 34 issues across all the different runs, I think it might be my favorite Star Wars thing, just period. As, well, as, a, as, as, a, as a complete pack. I mean, so far, every time, and we're still in the early stages, every time they introduce a new element, I'm like, all of this together is amazing. Like, Darth Vader's facing off against, like, a secret society of empire acolytes i'm like with sly so more, like, more like, as the leader sly oh, like, more, that's yeah. so cool can we talk yeah. about then, last week's vader is showing up and they're going you know they're going i love this whole crimson dawn like party thing that yeah. everyone is going oh, to yeah. like that's gonna be so freaking cool kira is back in the yeah. main star wars run you got the bombshell like you're giving okay. me in the main Wars, you're giving me the most emotional like lobot moments of all time i'm like but this you is left great. you left off the biggest appearance yet death stick that stick, that stick from bringing her back, <laughs> uprising, dude. From uprising, which has I a great play... story, which is slept absolutely, on. So absolutely, long. absolutely. I used to play Uprising all day. I used to literally just like flip through the art book, not the actual art book, because it's never yeah, been released. It, it's been it's a secret art book that only the people who worked on it got. It makes me so bad. Which is unfair. But all the pictures ended up online. I used to just sift through them because it's such so good, good artwork. Such good artwork. Uh, the, that whole like Anawat lockdown under um, Governor Adelhard. Adelhard I'm like, give me a show set during that. It's With the original cool... like purge troopers, and oh they mention God. it. Like they always mention it. Like they mentioned such... it in Battlefront Two, and they mentioned it. Uh, yeah, you know, where well, you did... go there? I mean, you go to Bespin during it. Yeah, that's They're right. Like, yeah, like, yeah. Remember, Governor Adelhard's like the stuff's just starting to get. Like I wanted to get a show in a show set on in the Anawat sector during that time. Yeah, would be so good. Yeah. Oh Have my you... God. Have you found the, they have the script for like the entire series online for anybody who's even remotely interested in uprising. May I suggest first go look at any of the like concept art and artwork associated with the game. Yeah. For the record, we were talking about a mobile game that had like it's a, a mobile game that is story plot to no it. No longer the available. Concept is so cool to me. Yeah. So same. rich with potential. That I want to see it. And Bring it you, back. If the, if the artwork sparks your imagination, Look up the script. Somebody wrote out like the full script online for like the entire story that they released up until it, it ended. No, I wish. It's but like uh, and we're talking about it though because a character from it, a bounty hunter, who is a knight descent. She's like raised by a knight sister. Yeah. Um, her name is Deathstick. Is in Bounty Hunters. Yeah, she just appeared. So it's like I love when they do that. Like these, like long, almost. I don't want to say long forgotten, but these forgotten pieces of canon that are no longer even available, they're still referencing and connecting to. I just love that. Wait, even Dirge, Death Stick? I mean, I love yeah, that they're going to bring all this stuff back I remember in. Dirge. Dirge, yeah, Dirge, I think Dirge, Dirge is definitely me. a level above Death Stick. Death Stick is like, <laughs> I mean, a, you really got to reach to go A level stick. above, That's but like, there's like, it was pretty random to bring Dirge back, I feel, especially in this time period. But like what Matt just said, I love that they're bringing small and moderate little uh parts of non-canon back into canon and it's my favorite fun. running canon things and this is the context of the comics i'm rereading because it's funny as uh, aj mentioned all new marauders are all yeah it our minds melded and we're already doing a show we're reading we've already read um the first we've read uh we're, i'm doing i'm bringing johnny and dylan my co-host on all new nerds through the canon comics chronologically and i i've read them all but we've done the darth maul run Qui Gon and um, the Darth Maul Age of Republic, the two are Age of Republic and the Darth Maul miniseries from 2017. But one of my favorite like running bits that I was reminded of myself because you see it in Darth Maul is on on Nar Shadda, There's this Zabrak barkeep who is in like every he's like consistently through all the different timelines on Nar Shadda and in 
in Darth Maul, you see him and his and this this a young version of him, his dad. And I'm like, that's so like that's such a little detail that in this one panel, like there's the, his, oh, his dad and he's young right there, like behind the bar. And then you see him in Star Wars. Now we saw him just recently in War of the Bounty Hunters, where he was talking to Boba Fett. And I'm like, I love stuff like that. Like that. Yeah. No one points that out, but like yeah, the little story of like that guy is in like four or five comic issues, but it's across so many eras and tells a story. I love it. The music is flaring with me. And I yeah, just no, think it's, it's intense. I, th- I, I think it's great. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, just one of the many things that makes Star Wars so great. Like this, like some random background character, some random barkeep uh, has a, doesn't a, even have a name. Doesn't does, have yeah. A name. People that don't have names, they still have, they're still kind of part of a, a big story and it's uh, yeah. And then you take C list characters like Cobb Vanth and you bump them up to like <laughs> A plus tier just you, by putting just like a by, cardboard cutouts of freaking cop man. Yeah, I dude, wish I had him. He would be right here right now. He should be right yeah. here, but he's not. And I have like three t-shirts of him. Um, I wanted to rewind and do talk really? about Vader last week. What? I said, do you really? Yeah. I'm going to get his action figure, but I don't have a shirt. I have two Vance t-shirts. I lied. It's not three. Three sounded cooler. But anyways, the Vader comic last week. Um, Great issue. The v- Great Vader issue. and Ochi show. Yep. Love Vader and Ochi. Uh, 2021. Yeah. Great combo. Great, great, uh, great duo. But they're they like kick... Mobius and Loki. Yes. Ooh, oh, are. no. Don't even get me started. I still have to tell you about what, what I liked about Loki, but we'll talk about that another time. Yeah. Not on, uh, not on the book no. club. No, no. So where the hell was I? <laughs> Vader last issue. week. Vader. Yeah. Vader number 13, which we all know here that I've been drooling about this Vader series for a lot of reasons. We had a lot of episode tie-ups, uh, tie-ins, a lot of Exegol yeah, things as well. Skywalker. You're just getting being spoon-fed. It's, like, it's Phantom yes, of Rise of Skywalker. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks for coming out. Um, for 13, they face off against IG-88. I almost said IG-11. So uh, and they kick his ass. They behead him. And it's another droid, because um, I know uh who did who did boba take out in the first war of the bounty hunter comic there zuckus well, and Forlom and, Forlom Forlom and zuckus down, but they're not dead i don't know yeah so do you think fine. ig88 is dead no, no. we already know he's end. not he's just at the end of that well, I, I didn't know i thought that was a flashback at the end though no i, mean, I thought that's he, where i thought that's legends, where he got the information from no 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 no. he's saying he comes back to report that he didn't die how did he get his head back on He's well, in legends and legends ig88 has like his consciousness spread across like a bunch of different bodies and they made his ship canon okay. i think i don't think we've seen it before but it, that's not true we saw it in the one shot but uh, it's a thing in legends is he has his consciousness uploaded a bunch of different droids okay so he's a bit he's essentially like his memories printed onto like 50 different dro- IG, uh, ig units essentially i mean he's a droid too he can just repair himself as well i Somebody suppose like, but like it's like how I don't did IG eleven come back after getting shot in the head? It's because he's a droid. Well, but Quill fixed him up. I mean, maybe someone else fixed up IG eighty eight. But I mean, they, didn't they take away his body? Oh, the other droids take him away in the issue. I don't know. That's not the I important part. The important part is that Vader Force shot him. IG-88. That, was, that was the coolest thing I've ever seen. I was like, and the other important part so was awesome. Sly Moore at the end. What was going on there? What do we think yeah, is what going is, on with what is that? this called again? Sly Mora is part of some sort of secret society. What is it? I got called? very like oh, Sith cult no. vibes from them, but I could be oh, wrong. Yeah. I'd love for it to be Sith cult vibes. I Me mean, too. I'm all, I love the Sly Mora uh, in the Acolyte, please. The Acolytes of the Beyond, which then turned into like the Sith Eternal. I love that concept. Remember that I day we looked that, that up? thing in like aftermath yeah we were and like, I, well this is that and this is well that. it was funny because i saw what was it it was ochi of visual bestoon, dictionary the visual dictionary where it specifically mentioned like ochi of bestoon is part of the acolytes of the beyond and the sith eternal i was like whoa they're still referencing the acolytes of the beyond <laughs> i love I just that made sure we don't know what that group is called yet but oh I look, thought, who, you know we don't know yeah, but do. what is your theory like what's what's going on with Sly Moore and those uh, those Slimos? Well, I don't I don't think they're aligned with Palpatine, so I don't think it's like directly Sith. Yeah, because um, they're kind of it looks like they're going behind his back. Um, I don't know. It could be a, giving out info about acolytes. Vader. It could be acolytes. And like I don't I can't understand what their goal is really. Well, to take out Vader. Right, but other that's it. 
Then what? Yeah. I don't. What's what's so, what? what's so good about clearly, that? Clearly, Vader had presents. Oh, so they do you think they're watching out for Palpatine and they're like, "Yo, this guy's gonna over." Like they see what's eventually coming down the line. I mean, they could just think Vader's an a hole who's killed a bunch of people and is disrupting. Palpatine's an a hole who's killed a bunch of people. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, Palpatine's but the Emperor. Vader's like Sly an Moore. unleashed dog. Does, yeah. does Sly Moore want to become Palpatine? Yeah. Are they friends though? Yeah, they're the best yeah. friends. They're always they just, together, dude. They're are they out. just enemies that are, keep each other close to go to uh, opera? I think with? him, 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 Mass, and uh, she you don't, all hang out. They, you they don't go, go to, to the opera with okay. someone. If hey, you're I'm not just your best buds. You I'm don't go to. Uh, here. You don't go to what is it? Frog Lake? No, it's not Frog Lake. It's, uh, it's uh, I believe it's Fish Lake. Squid Lake. Um, Squid, Squid Lake. Lake. Squid Lake. You don't go to Squid Lake with someone if you're not friends with them. True that. I've gone to things, events where I'm not friends with people. Squid Lake, though. Not Squid Lake, so yeah, you got me there. Not Squid, Squid Lake. Lake. <laughs> Squid Lake, oh, dude, I all. love that. Coming it, to a theater near you this That's summer. my favorite thing. It's like everybody's favorite prequel scene, and everybody's like, I love how like dark and scary it is. And then it, all you got to know is that Squid, Squid Lake, Lake is going on in the background. The, ca- the canon play Squid Lake. Squid Lake. It's great. Oh, I want to get that on like a t-shirt or a poster or something. Just like. Now, I wonder if anybody's made. Squid that. Lake, like, admit one. I'm sure that exists. That would be good. It must. It must. Dude, it hasn't. No way. That's a lie. You should make one. You should make one. Let's Damn do it. right. We should. Get the, get the printer ready. Get the, we should make like a playbill uh, for it and make like a shirt. That'd be sick. Hey, Anybody watching this, don't steal our idea. This oh, right, is my right, right. idea. I'll, I'll take this out so no one steals it. Um, What do we want to talk about uh, with the our comments, comic, right? Guys. There's a lot of comments, lot going on. A lot going on. Dig it in. The adventure line. Back. We got the face reveal. Martian face reveal. Ooh, oh, yeah. We about the, that the oh no, he's hot. Moment. Oh no, he's hot. Moment. Yeah. He's just like, gray, so, as we uh, know. Buff, hot Same. dude. I, I no longer as relate as to him. What'd you say? I said when I was reading Light of the Jedi, I, I envisioned him as a buff hot dude. No, so. I don't know why everybody did. I, I did. pictured I him as like this were... lanky, greasy dude. <laughs> You've mentioned the grease really more than him? once. You've mentioned the grease because he wears a helmet all the time. You get very greasy he's when still, you wear a helmet all the he's time. He's still greasy. He has it off more than you think. Kylo he's Ren's not... greasy. Never, never in the hall. He never reveals his face to the great hall. In the, in the hall, yeah, yeah. But he's always in his office and in, in Rising Storm so far. More often well, than yeah. not, I'm imagining with his helmet on, and then it's like. He pushed his helmet on. Like he said, his helmet off this whole time. Jeez. Yeah. Well, in the, hey, in in the, the book, first scene with uh, Diddly Do, whatever book. his name is, Diddly Do, Udi Dis, Udi <laughs> Dis, Diddly Do. <laughs> he comes. He that comes is. into the, the the cockpit w- without his helmet, and I was like, "Whoa, that's that's pretty big." He he barely ever shows his uh, face <laughs> Diddly face. Do. He's more confident now. I'm, I'm keeping that. Also, okay. Dis. They okay. In I'm. Sorry to, to bring us off track again, but I spent way too much time on this yesterday. In the Rising Storm, they mentioned that the third Tempest Runner is a peeny. Have we met a peeny before? Yeah, he's a little he's a little boy in Rogue One. You know the guy in the shot when it's it's the Jedi it's the oh. Jedi like, attack and it cuts to the little guy with the gun. Yeah, like, hiding behind that. He's like, oh he's man, like, yeah, that's see, the I, new I, Tempest. That's, that's the new third Tempest Runner. Wow. Well. Yeah, uh, the Wikipedia good. has it like Piani, like P I A N I, I think, or something like that. And I was like, no, that's not it, because they clearly said Peeny. But I guess that's maybe Mark Thompson just doesn't know it. how to. It's how it's spelled. It's spelled the same. So Peeny. Well, I'm you glad can't I trust know that. audio books. No, you can't, because technically it's not even Martian Row. It's Markian Row. No, it's Martian Row. I like to say Martian. Mark, Mark, they, they, they say Markian. The authors say Markian. I say Martian. Speaking of which, Levi, um, well, I know you watched most of that uh, Zoom call the other day. We had it on watched in the it kitchen. All. We had, Jamie watched it, um, but what was your take on that? You enjoy it? Heck yeah. I mean, my take is that we have some awesome minds working on Star Wars right now. Yeah. How many waves do you think we're going to get? And, and, I, and I tweeted it, and both Kevin Scott and uh, Charles That's right. Like, Dude, Kevin Scott has been on everything. He's been all over the place. Like, he's been jumping into so many different things. He's 100% like, I don't know, keeping an eye out on, like, how everybody's reacting to his book, which has been extremely favorable so I love far. That so he should be very proud. Charles Soul was similar. Um, yeah. And it's amazing that, like, if I if I published a book, I would, like, go into hiding. I'm like, I don't want to see what people are saying about I'd it. I'd be too afraid. I'd be too scared. But he's not. Oh, he's, he does, so it makes you feel better. There you go. She I was love talking Claudia about how she, well. 
she was talking about how she doesn't like to. She's like, I just hope it's good, and I, I feel like she especially with Star Wars, like, I'd be like, oof. But no, Kevin terrifying. Scott. If you ever see this, if ever, ever this ever gets to you, I would love to interview you. He's his love for like Jackson alone makes him so hey, fascinating. I tried. His this assistant. His this assistant turned show. me down. This is a comic show, and he got into Star Wars through the comics. So that's true. So Same. Kevin Scott, if you're listening, uh, come on our show first. No, I'm kidding. Hey, come on, our both of ours. Levi, yeah. who was it you reached out to? Charles Soul. Charles. The Charles. The dual interview, I think. Hey, he was in Boston. Uh, I think I sent you the photo. He was in Boston last week, but I didn't go in to see him. Apparently, apparently, Claudia is booked through like Labor Day, and that's Claudia Gray. So, yeah. Yeah. how does Star Wars Explain get her on? I mean, I guess he's 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 like, a little bigger. He's a big us. deal. <laughs> he's a little <laughs> bigger than us. A little, a little bit. bit. Alex, bit. if you're watching, we'd like to interview you at some po point too. So, yeah, Alex and Have Molly. You on our show, I should. Say. We want to. Uh, We'd love to. I know you, together. Alex and Molly. Hopefully, you remember me. We spent some time together. Wait, what was it? Um, celebration. The celebration bash, or no, just a regular celebration. Real celebration happened to run regular. A bunch. We were in the elevator with me, you, and Andy hey. Blanchard and Molly, and we Next. also went to Schmodown. It was a whole thing. Next mm. celebration. If you spot him, you need to text me like immediately, and I need to hunt you down because that was like my one goal for celebration oh. last year. I met a bunch of people. It was great. Whatever. I'm not jealous. I'm not mad. I'm Other sure. non-book things. I'm, t I'm taking us off. I'm taking us off track. Hey, this else is has. what we're known for. This is what this we is do. The, this I is swear, man. Episode, I feel like so. I met you in the line. One of the lines going in. You met all of us. You probably did. I, I wouldn't be surprised. Levi is hoping to come to Boston in um, August, we'll right? Just, for the finale. Of I was the thinking about bitch. that yesterday, and I'm like, I, I really want to do Dude, that. I'm so mad I'm gonna miss that. You're not gonna you're not gonna be here? I'm gonna be Matt, in you on miss, vacation. You missed you miss You've gotta everything. be kidding me. Dude, All right, Matt, you're you off guys the, have the worst the timing. Team. You have the worst timing. The one week out of the year that I'm unavailable is the second week in August, every year since I've been born. We didn't pick it. That's when they chose to do the finale. It's true. It's just terrible timing. It's That's terrible. Called, called Lucasfilm. You're gonna I miss will. our viral um reaction our one reaction video we ever do because we'll have like, i mean maybe maybe we delay it and we do it instead for the for the premiere of visions Ooh. that'd be cool finale of bad best definitely gonna get more traction but that is true you'll do, do it without me i mean i'll create my own re i'll do my Smooth own reaction there. postpone the vacation yeah that's not happening <laughs> where are you going for your ad of this we're on the we're, we're live here we're uh recording i think we're all about just about done here this was just the the pilot to talk about some books with some you good piloted audience some good pals we'll get jamie back here next week we'll talk about next week's comics i don't know what's coming out next week do you know what's coming out levi he's working no. on it no okay <laughs> Anything I, else? come on you had an opportunity Anything there else? You're, you're boston kylo come on Anything else? I don't have my helmet on. Week. My unexpected Star Wars moments was on Thursday, it was Fast and Furious 9, and then on Saturday, it was Fast and Furious 9 again. What was that? There's a mention of Star Wars in that? Watch the film. I can't. Uh, See you guys. Whoa, what an ending. Week. I, wanna, I wanna make a Martian Row helmet so badly. That's gonna be tough. These but we don't really two. know what it looks like. It's just, there's art. I want it action does. figures. I want more pictures of these people. I want... My I own forget. Jedi costume for these guys. What I want an Amar Chris Funko pop. Yeah. yeah. That would be I sick. I forgot where I read it or heard it or somewhere, but they said they were going to make action figures for this. I think now, that was just you course, and I. Did they? I think you may have. Yeah. I think you and I, I were having been, a fever. That could have been like a, a planted, wishful thinking memory.